Hello and welcome to NIJ Weekly. This is Divya Singh Sharma. I am Richa Devedi. This is Shivani Mohan. We are here to bring you what's trending this week. The highlights from the week that was on 21st November 2022. From India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi shining at G20 Indonesia to India taking over the G20 presidency at Bali. Eventful meeting with PM Rishi Sunak. Good news in defence, space, beauty, culture and more to look forward to on this week's newscast. In the field of space this week, India's first privately developed rocket launched on a suborbital mission. The maiden mission of Hyderabad-based space startup Skyroot Aerospace named Praram, the beginning aptly and first rocket named aptly to Vikram S after Indian space legend Vikram Sarabhai, launched successfully from ISRO's launch pad in Sriharikota. In the defence sector this week, in order to check Chinese aggression, India and US are holding the 18th edition of the Joint Military Training Exercise Yudh Abhyas in Oli Uttarakhand. This helps both countries to encounter China by endorsing each other. And in another major technology push for defence, Indian Army has envisioned construction of permanent defences along the line of actual control in eastern Ladakh using cutting-edge 3D printing technology, a move that will save time and improve its defence preparedness. The Indian Army has taken a number of steps to boost its capability, development and achieve modernization. Now, let's get Richa on board for some more news. Over to you, Richa. Thanks, Divya. Prime Minister Narendra Modi took over India's G20 presidency in Bali this week. Prime Minister Modi stated that it is a matter of pride for every Indian as the country takes over the presidency. India will organize G20 meetings in different states and cities in India. He further stated that together we will make G20 a catalyst for global change and that India's G20 presidency will be inclusive, ambitious, decisive and action-oriented. He also stated that India would give priority to women-led development in its G20 agenda, which would be driven by the recently unveiled theme of One Earth, One Family, One Future. The White House stated later in the week that India played an essential role in negotiating the Bali declaration of the just-concluded G20 summit and applauded Prime Minister Narendra Modi for saying that today's era must not be of war. Thank you so much for those updates. And now, let's see what Shivani has in store for us this week. The land of rising sun, Arunachal Pradesh, is all set to get its first greenfield airport. Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi inaugurated the Doni Polo Airport this week. The airport will boost the connectivity, tourism and economic growth, thereby allowing the state to prosper. After 68 years, the Northeast region is not just witnessing air connectivity, but is now a priority region under the PM's Oran vision. From airport opening up for the first time to made in India aircraft flying on routes, Northeast is now the protagonist of India's civil aviation story. The second phase of medicine from Sky India became the first country to deliver vaccines to cattle after humans through drones. The history has again been created in Arunachal Pradesh. This is proof of the ever-expanding utility of drones. Inaccessible roads will no longer be hindrance in providing health facilities. The Ministry of Textiles, in partnership with Northern India Textile Research Association and Indian Technical Textile Association, organized a full-day event, National Conclave on Technical Textiles, ProTech in the National Capital this week. The centre is committed to promote indigenous manufacturing of technical textiles to explore the global opportunities and cater to the domestic and international market demands. The technical textile is a sunrise industry with a robust growth rate of 10% annually. And that's all from my end. Thank you, Shivani. And it's time for some interesting news of the week. In the beauty and tech sector, India's Startup Group is planning to open at least 20 beauty tech stores with virtual makeup kiosks and digital skin tests to get young affluent shoppers to buy premium cosmetic products. The move pits Tata for a share of the fast-growing $16 billion beauty and personal care market in the world's second most populous country. That's all from us today on New India Junction. Thank you so much for watching us. Do hit like, share and subscribe. And that's me, Divya, signing off.